coming up on 5-Minute News. Twenty-eight killed in Kentucky floods, with death toll expected to rise. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi begins Asia tour in Singapore. And first ship carrying Ukrainian grain leaves port. It's Monday, August 1. I'm St. Templeton. Floods unleashed by torrential rains in eastern Kentucky have killed at least 28 people, including four children, as authorities work to provide food and shelter for thousands of displaced residents. Some homes in the hardest-hit areas were swept away after days of heavy rainfall described by some as the worst in the US state's history. Rescue teams guided motorboats through residential and commercial areas searching for victims. Officials warn the death toll may continue to rise, with more expected rainfall potentially hampering rescue efforts. The National Weather Service forecasts several more rounds of showers and storms, with a flood watch in effect in southern and eastern Kentucky. Governor Andy Bashir, who declared a state emergency, warned authorities will be finding bodies for weeks as rescuers fan out to more remote areas. President Joe Biden declared a major disaster in Kentucky on Friday, allowing federal funding to be allocated to the state. Affected residents have been told they can begin applying for disaster assistance from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The floods are the second major national disaster to strike Kentucky in seven months, following a swarm of tornadoes that claimed nearly 80 lives in the western part of the state in December. US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has arrived in Singapore, kicking off her Asian tour as questions swirled over a possible stop in Taiwan that has fueled tension with Beijing. Pelosi will call on Singapore President Halimar Jacob and Prime Minister Lee Shen Long and meet with a number of cabinet ministers, said a spokesperson for Singapore's foreign ministry. She's also expected to attend a cocktail reception with the American Chamber of Commerce in Singapore. There is no media access to her visit, which has been kept under tight wraps. In a statement over the weekend, Pelosi said she will also visit Malaysia, South Korea and Japan to discuss trade, the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, security and democratic governance. She did not confirm news reports that she might visit Taiwan, which is claimed by Beijing as its own territory. Chinese President Xi Jinping warned against meddling in Beijing's dealings with the island in a phone call last week with his American counterpart, Joe Biden. Beijing sees official American contact with Taiwan as encouragement to make its decades-old de facto independence permanent, a step US leaders say they don't support. Pelosi, head of one of three branches of the US government, would be the highest-ranking elected American official to visit Taiwan since 1997. A ship carrying Ukrainian grain left the port of Odessa on Monday, the first to do so as part of a deal to unblock Ukraine's Black Sea ports. A statement from the United Nations said the Sierra Leone-flagged cargo ship Rizzoni left for Lebanon, carrying more than 26,000 tonnes of corn. The corn will head to Lebanon, a tiny nation in the grips of what the World Bank has described as one of the world's worst financial crises in more than 150 years. A 2020 explosion at its main port in Beirut shattered its capital city and destroyed grain silos there. Today, Ukraine, together with partners, is taking another step towards preventing world hunger, said Alexander Kubrakov, the Ukrainian Minister of Infrastructure. He said it would also help Ukraine. Unlocking ports will provide at least $1 billion in foreign exchange revenue to the economy and an opportunity for the agricultural sector to plan for next year. 
Russia and Ukraine signed separate agreements with Turkey and the UN, clearing the way for Ukraine, one of the world's key breadbaskets, to export 22 million tonnes of grain and other agricultural goods that have been stuck in Black Sea ports because of Russia's invasion. The deal also allows Russia to export grain and fertilisers. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.